This crazy lady thinks this poor guy is an employee and starts making ridiculous demands of him. But when she slips over because of her own incompetence, her crazy goes to another level when she threatens legal action against this non-employee. Happy birthday, today's your birthday and on with the revamped show. A little bit of backstory. I used to live in Wisconsin, where snow can create slipping hazards in certain department stores. So one Sunday night, I'm heading home from church, and I decide to stop by Walmart to pick up a large storage bin. I was getting ready to move, so wanted to be prepared. Anyway, I make my way over to the storage bin aisle, trying to find the largest bin they had. When all of a sudden, this rather large lady, let's call her LL, huffs up to me and snaps her fingers saying I need to follow her and help her lift, insert whatever item it was she couldn't lift. Oh, I'm sorry, I don't work here. She was huffing and puffing. Well, obviously you work here because you're wearing a tie. I had a button-up shirt, tie and khakis on because I had just gotten out of church. For some reason, tie equals I work at Walmart? Nope, sorry, I just got out of church, which is why I'm dressed up, which I thought sounded pretty reasonable. Lo and behold, I just opened up the gates of hell, and Satan himself was about to grace me with his presence. I don't give a frick where you came from. All I want is you to lift my darn, whatever item it was she needed, into my cart. Now get your butt over here before I get your manager and have your butt fired. I'm a pretty laid back guy, but at this point I snapped back at her. Lady, I do not work here. Now leave me the heck alone and let me find my bin in peace. At this point I grabbed the largest bin I saw, not heavy but rather awkward to carry, and head to the checkout line where I see LL following behind me still, yelling obscenities and saying she's gonna have my butt fired. I'm a good 20 to 25 feet away from her, but she picks up speed and narrows the gap. She's honing in on me like a cheetah about to take down its prey. I was honestly concerned at what she'd do to me if she caught up to me. By now we've already gained a few prying eyes, wondering what the heck all the commotion is about, and I'm looking around for an actual manager or employee to help me. At this point, I'm about ready to drop my storage bin and make a run for the exit, when all of a sudden, a miracle happened. Remember how I said it snows a lot where I'm from and creates slipping hazards? Well, LL was going a little too fast and slipped on a puddle and she fell hard. I guarantee the impact would have registered on the Richter scale. The sound that escaped her lips when she hit the ground was a cross between a moose bellow and a humpback whale mating call. The sound still haunts my dreams occasionally. Now I'm not totally heartless, so I slowly walk up to her, but still keep my distance since she was ready to rip my head off 10 seconds ago. Are you alright? Did you want me to help you up? I looked into her eyes, and all I saw was pure evil. Satan himself would have shrugged at the glare I received. Get the heck away from me, you piece of crap! You shoved me! Screaming and crying at the top of her lungs. Several other people had gathered, and finally several employees. She eventually gets helped up. She's still crying and says she's gonna sue me for pushing her. Luckily for me, several other customers saw the whole debacle and said she slipped on a puddle. Plus, there were several caution wet floor signs. A manager comes over and speaks with me and LL. LL says she's gonna sue the store for having wet floors and that she wants me fired for ignoring the customer and making her run on the wet floor in the first place due to me still holding my large bin. He doesn't work here. Also, we have wet floor signposts. I just wanna buy my bin and get out of here. This lady has been harassing me. She was blubbering and obviously embarrassed. Well, somebody better help me up then. Some employee helps her, and the manager apologizes to me. I go and buy my bin and leave. You know, it's difficult enough being an actual employee at Walmart or one of those retail stores, let alone being a customer who gets confused with being someone who works there, because you're not being paid to be there. So any amount of time of them trying to convince you that you work there is just wasting your time. I've only once had the experience where somebody was confused and thought I worked at the store. It was just after I attended a wedding, and I was just killing time at a store. And similarly to this story, I just happened to be wearing a nice shirt and tie. Fortunately, my experience was just a simple, oh, sorry, and then they left, like a normal person would do. But I do feel like I missed out a bit. It sounds like it was a bit exciting trying to run away from LL there. This Some time ago, I had a job as a runner of a crappy horror movie company. 
part of my job as a runner was to go to the bank to make various deposits and withdrawals for both the company and the boss. I went to the bank almost every day, sometimes multiple times a day. The bank was in a really upscale neighborhood, so it was not uncommon to see some really high-end cars in the nearby lot where I parked. The lot was not free if you were just parking to walk the area, but you could get validation if you went to certain specific businesses, like the bank a few buildings away. At this point, I had been at my job for about three and a half years, which meant I had been to this lot easily about a thousand times. I knew a lot of the workers in the area by name, including the lot workers. We talked a lot, and oftentimes I could get away with not getting validation, even on days I wasn't working. I was in my mid-twenties and was often in shorts, flip-flops, and a merchandise shirt from my company. We didn't have uniforms, so they just gave me a ton of shirts from their movies, so I would have some kind of identifier while I was out working. Now, I should mention that I am Hispanic with pretty dark skin. I normally wouldn't even bother mentioning that, because who cares? You know who cares? Rich entitled people. I've seen my fair share of veiled racism and typecasting over the years. Heck, even at that lot. I've been asked multiple times to park people's cars. They usually apologize and look embarrassed when I point out the guys in the polo shirts and vests with the name of the lot on them. So I usually just roll my eyes and go about my day. Occasionally, I'll get someone rude that will snap their fingers at me, which I extremely hate, or chuck their keys at me. I'm usually a bit more of a jerk, but nothing major. On this day, I was in a fairly poor mood. My company was starting to do some shady stuff and was screwing over the employees. A lot of people hadn't been paid in weeks, and I was on half checks. The only reason I got any money was because the main meat of my job had me driving anywhere from 4 to 12 hours a day, and I can't do that without gas, which they reimbursed me for on top of my paycheck. So, on my way to the bank, I bought a strawberry smoothie for lunch, as I knew there was no chance I was going to make it back to the office to eat the food I brought. I pull into the non-valet parking in the lot, chat with the attendant while I grab my ticket, and start walking towards the bank. I hear someone shouting, Jose! Hey Jose! But obviously I ignore it, as my name is not Jose. I walk past the lady shouting when I feel something smack me in the back of the head, dropping my glasses. I pick up my glasses and turn around and see this red-in-the-face lady glaring angrily at me. I was super ticked off. I looked down to see what hit me, and of course, it was her car and house keys. This nasty lady literally threw her keys at a stranger's head. She was driving some really nice Escalade that looked like it was probably fully loaded and detailed regularly. I pick up her keys and shout, What the heck, lady? She shouts back, didn't you hear me calling you, you freaking racial slur? It's your own fault for ignoring me. I'm late for my hair appointment. Park my gosh darn car. I was absolutely dumbfounded. I tried to explain to her that I didn't work there, but she was not having it. Every time I opened my mouth, she called me something even more demeaning and racist, questioning my intelligence and threatening me to get me fired. She started walking away, so I decided, screw it. I hurried up, walked to the restaurant next door, and shouted, Hey! She turned around, steaming at her ears. I said as calmly as I could manage, I don't work there. Then I dropped her keys in my half-full smoothie and chucked it as hard as I could into the restaurant's dumpster. The look on her face when the cup exploded in pink chunks as her keys dropped into a stanky dumpster was absolutely the freaking best. I walked away flipping her off as she turned and ran back to the attendants. After I did all my bank business, I went back to the lot and saw her shouting at the lot security and pointing at me. The security guard, who of course I knew, asked me what happened. I told him she threw her keys at me started shouting obscenities, and refused to take them back when I tried to explain that I didn't work there, and also that I threw them in my smoothie and chucked them in the trash next door. He was holding back his laughter when I finished. She tried to get him to call the cops on me, but he tried to explain to her that she willingly gave me her keys and refused to take them back, telling her that she should have taken that extra second to listen to what I was trying to tell her. She then demanded that one of the workers go into the dumpster and fish the keys out, 
but he just pointed at a sign that said that the lot takes no responsibility for lost or stolen property. He then informed her that her Escalade was blocking traffic into the lot and that if she didn't move it in 15 minutes, he would call a tow truck to move it. She did not like that and she let him know she didn't through racist ranting and grandstanding. He stood there quietly the whole time and took it. When she was finally finished, he looked down at his watch and told her, You have seven minutes, ma'am. Wouldn't you know it, she angrily trudged off towards the dumpster. We had a good laugh about it, but he told me not to do it again. As I pulled out of the lot, I got a nice view of her in the dumpster, furiously throwing everything everywhere. I honked and waved as I passed, and went about my day with a big smile on my face. The next day, one of the lot guys told me that they ended up having to tow her Escalade. I guess she couldn't find her keys. Oh well, hope the hairdresser didn't mind her smelling like garbage. I'm not sure about the legality of all this, or if I would have been in actual trouble if the police had been called. She just caught me on a bad day. I don't feel the least bit sorry about what I did though. I guess the moral of the story is, don't be racist trash. And also, don't just give your keys to anyone like an idiot. So, there's a pizza place close to where I live, and sometimes, after a long day at work, I'm not in the mood to cook. So I place an order on their app for takeout when I leave for work and pick it up on my way home. Normally, it goes off without a hitch. Sometimes, I even get there right as they cut it and place it in their warming bags. Today, however, things just weren't going my way. As I finally get there, the delivery guy was on his way out important for later. And when I was on my way back to my car, up comes BB. Apparently she thinks I'm a delivery driver and that they all wear business casual. I'm opening my door and I had my pizza on the roof of my car as she stomps up to me and starts yelling. I don't register what she's saying at first. Long day at the end of a long week with little sleep. But apparently she had ordered delivery and the guy hadn't delivered it yet and her little brats at home were hungry. I manage to get a word in while she takes a breath and try to explain that I'm not the delivery guy, but BB isn't having any of it. BB then stops yelling and grabs my pizza off the roof of my car, thinking it's hers. She takes one look at it, realizes it isn't hers, and throws it on the ground. I'm standing there, still a bit shocked at her behavior, when she opens the passenger side door of my car and gets in, apparently looking for more. I finally snap into action and go around and drag her butt out of my car and, knowing he had already left, tell her to go inside and yell at the delivery guy. She apparently accepts now that I'm not the delivery guy and without saying a word stomps inside, leaving me out there with a pizza with extra pavement for a topping. Not willing to give her the benefit of getting away with this crap, I follow her inside, curious as to how the staff will handle this and to get another pizza. BB is mid-screech already as I walk in and stand by the door. Apparently, she doesn't believe that the delivery guy already left because the dummy outside said he was. The guy at the counter, Bob, who's worked there for a few years and is a nice guy, sees me by the door and asks if she's telling the truth. I simply tell him that she is crazy and owes me a pizza. Bob then assures BB that the delivery guy left five minutes ago. And apparently she accepts this and starts to walk to the doors. Bob then chimes in and says that since she wouldn't be able to get home before the delivery guy made it there, she could pay here and he'd tell him to just leave it and run. She agrees, mumbling something about them not being as stupid as she thought, though she apparently had a problem with the amount, which wasn't what she was quoted on the phone. Bob told her what was on the receipt, her extra large vegetarian pizza, a two liter of Pepsi, my large pizza, and one of those big cookies. BB goes crazy at Bob, asking what the heck he was thinking trying to pull that. Bob somehow managing to keep a straight face, asks her if what I said was true, to which she replies, So what if it is? You break it, you bought it, simple as that. And BB then in a huff, turns to try and apparently run away and try and get home in time, but stops dead when she realizes I'm still standing there by the door. I just motion with my fingers for her to turn back around and pay. And Bob adds that he can always call the driver and have him lose the pizza. BB looks genuinely shocked and said we were trying to blackmail her over a pizza. Really? After a minute of pouting, she caved and paid, swearing at us the whole time. 
She then stomps out, gets back into her car, and peels out of the parking lot like she was being chased by the cops. And Bob tells me that my new pizza will be about 12 minutes. He then says he added the cookie as a way of apologizing for her, and was surprised that she didn't notice it, and also said he'd go back and void my original order to give me a refund. We laugh, and eventually I get a fresh hot replacement pizza, and the cookie, and go on my way after thanking Bob, again, for dealing with her the way he did. While writing this up, I realized that Bob never actually called the delivery guy, and that I should ask him about it next time I go in. I actually have a lot of jobs. I think I'm up to five at the moment. All zero hours. Flexible and freelance stuff. I've got to jump around a lot if I want to make a full-time pay. Most of my jobs involve caring for, or entertaining children in some way. There's this one little girl. I'll call her Jane. She's about six and lives in my town has a few younger siblings, and keeps showing up at my various jobs. We don't really know each other, I just recognize her face, and she recognizes mine. Each time she finds me, she gets more and more confused. So during the school holidays, our interactions were sort of like, one week, I painted her brother's face at the fair, week two, I helped her sister choose a book at the library event, week three, I sold something to her mom at the shop etc and so on. I've never interacted with her directly, but I've seen her at least once a week, all summer. Each time she clocks me at a different job, I can see her little brain trying to figure out why I'm also here. I think I'm starting to scare her a little. Like maybe I'm following her or something. No one else in her family seems to notice or remember me. So the town had this big event at the end of summer. I was not working. I was there enjoying some candy floss and chilling out dressed in jeans and a t-shirt. I'm sitting on the benches, and Jane and her family walk past. Her head turns all the way around as she stares at me. I can see her brain freaking out a little bit. Why am I here too? I give her a little wave. She waves back and off she goes. About half an hour later, I'm watching the school kids perform their little show, and I feel a tug on my sleeve. It's little Jane, tears in her eyes. She asks if I can help. This is the first time she's ever spoken to me, but she's lost her mum, and she needs help. So of course I'm going to help her. Having worked with kids, I know the drill. I get the info we need, mum's name and what she's wearing. I couldn't remember. We find the lost children's stand and get the staff to send out a message for the mum. I assure her that mummy is looking for her and we'll wait here till she finds us. She's holding my hand as we wait and she says, I'm glad you work here too. I didn't have the heart to correct her. Submit your story to be read on the channel at voiceyhearstories at gmail.com and join our Voicey Veteran community at r slash voiceyhear. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode. Alright Voicey Veterans, I'll see you in the next one.